So guys, once again, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and smash the likes on this video, I'd appreciate it. So guys, in this next news story, three men have been jailed after a street fight between rival barber shops near Nottinghamshire left a father of two dead. Herish Zandi pleaded guilt to manslaughter saying he delivered the fatal knife blows to Seba Rash's heart but the victim's family is furious and believes he's covering for the real killer. There was two of the men, Daniel Panna and Sam Mohazeri, they admitted lesser charges of violent disorder. Ibrahim Takmari is the brother of the victim Peshang Sleman who was, I said, known as Seba Rash and Mr. Takmari was seriously injured in the attack in Summer Courts Hill and he believes the brother's killer has escaped justice. Mr. Sleman died after the street fight between the two warring factions of barber shops in Summer Courts. Mr. Takamari, who was also stabbed during the incident, said, Where is the justice for my brother? As a family, we feel totally let down. These men are monsters. They will come after us. We are sure of that. Mr. Takamari believes his brother, who he grew up with in Kurdistan, has been betrayed by what took place in court and that his whole family have been let down by the legal system. Additionally, he said that those who loved the victim were not informed that the prosecution accepted lesser charges on a group of defendants four weeks into their murder trial. He said, we believe that my brother was murdered, but we are not told until the day before the sentence the prosecution has accepted these lesser charges. We feel that as we are not UK citizens, we have been overlooked. So in a sentence hearing at Leicester Crown Court, it was heard how the two rival groups came together in Summer Courts Hill following an ongoing dispute between the 22-year-old victim and a separate defendant called Daniel Panahai after the former left the latter's barber's business to set up on his own. Jailing Zandi for nine years, Judge Gregory Dickinson said two groups decided to take the law into their own hands, culminating in the death of Peshang Sleiman. Afterwards, he was abandoned to his fate. On any view, Peshang was outnumbered and someone had a knife. He was stabbed 13 times in the back. Some of the injuries were superficial. Others penetrated the muscle. There were two stab wounds to the chest, one to a depth of 14 centimetres, the full length of the blade. You, Heresh Zandi, you admitted to wielding the knife which was used to inflict the fatal wounds. You were not acting in self-defence and neither was anyone else. So the victim died following the incident outside a co-op in Summer Courts Hill. So during the case, the prosecutor Nick Lobenberg KC said, In Summer Courts, there are two barber shops run by Kurdish men. Pro Barbers is a barber shop connected to the defendants in this case. SR Barbers is just at the opposite end of the same street and is connected to the victims in this case. There has clearly been an ongoing feud between those connected and these two barber shops and in the early hours of November the 25th, 2021, this erupted into great violence outside the area of pro barbers. Peshang Sleiman was killed and his brother was stabbed, causing really serious injuries. A number of weapons were later recovered from the scene, including a kosh, a baseball bat, a knife, knuckle dusters and screwdrivers. Police and ambulance clues later arrived at around 2 o'clock in the morning and found two men lying on the pavement. One was lying unconscious and was not moving. That was Peshang. The other man was shouting, I can't breathe. That was his brother and both had been stabbed. Mr. Lobenberg said Sleman had suffered a number of stab wounds from the same weapon to the back and front of his body and a post-mortem examination later found the facial wound to be one which went through his chest and into his aorta, which is the main artery which takes blood away from the heart. He was declared dead at the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham. I just want to say, rest in peace, Mr. Sleman, and my condolences go out to your family. Immediately after the violence, as Mr. Sleman was lying on the pavement, dying and his brother was seriously injured, the defendants did everything they could to get away from the scene and make themselves scarce. A number of victim impact statements were read to the court by the prosecution team. They told how Mr. Sleman had two daughters who had moved to the UK from Kurdistan back in 2015 and was lawfully living, working in the UK. In a victim impact statement, one of his uncles said, I lost my beautiful nephew when he was stabbed to death in the most heartless and brutal way. He had two beautiful children who now grow up without their father in their life. So Zandi was jailed for nine years. 
His defense solicitor said his client was not a barber, but worked as a yodel delivery driver and had been living in Leek in Staffordshire. He said it was a spur of the moment decision to pick up a knife not bought by him and he used that knife twice to stab Peshang Sleman when Peshang was raining blows to his brother's head with a Stanley hammer. Witnessing this, that led to the defendant's loss of control. So as I said, he was jailed for nine years. Panhahi was sentenced to prison for two years and 11 months. His defence said he fled Kurdish Iran at the age of 15 as he and his family were being persecuted. He said the defendant arrived in the UK as a refugee and was taken in by a family of teachers. He said he got GCSEs at school and an HND in engineering at college. He said Mr Panahi does not accept he played any part in the death of Mr Sleiman and it is on that basis that he's pleaded guilty to what he accepts was a serious piece of violent disorder. And Mozaheri was jailed for two years and 11 months and his defence said that a client has never accepted he had any weapon during the gang fight in Summercoats Hill. She said he came out of pro barbers and saw an altercation which was already starting and wishing to protect his family, he went towards the violence. So guys, this is a new story coming from Nottinghamshire Ways. In a story coming from Kent, a man has been jailed for trying to steal a cash machine from a supermarket. George Jones attempted to drag the machine from the co-op in Gravesend. Two vans arrived at the scene at around 4 o'clock on April the 6th. One van was then used to break through the front door of the store. Two attempts were made to pull the machine out of the shop, but on the second attempt, the van's chassis was broken. Three men involved then drove away from the scene and switched to a third van which was nearby. A pursuit took place during which they drove through red traffic lights the wrong way down the dual carriage when at speeds at more than 100 miles per hour. Jones was found by a police dog hiding under a bush and arrested and he was given a four-year, nine-month sentence at Maston Crown Court after admitting conspiracy to burglar and dangerous driving at a previous hearing. Detective Inspector Christopher Greenstreet of Kent and Essex Series Crown Directorate said, with a fourth man now serving a lengthy prison term for this kind of offending, the message to criminals is clear. Come to Kent to steal cash machines and we'll grab you. I would like to praise the officers from Kent, the Met Police and Surrey who responded on the night of this offence, tracking down this man despite his dangerous attempts to get away and investigate the work has led to the guilty plea. And guys, in a new story coming from London, an Islington man has been convicted of a senseless murder at a birthday party in a West London pub last summer. Timothy Simon, is 59, was found guilty of murdering Wayne Phillips. On July the 23rd, 2022, Wayne had arrived with two female companions at an Uxbridge Road pub where they were attending a birthday party. They bought presents from the boot of their car and entered the pub, greeting people at the entrance. Within the space of two minutes of arrival, Wayne was approached by Simon. The men had a fight briefly before Wayne collapsed, having been stabbed in the chest, and Simon ran away from the scene. Police were called at around 12 o'clock midnight to reports of a man suffering stab injuries inside the pub in the evening. Officers attended along with ambulance colleagues and 58-year-old Wayne Phillip was found with a stab wound to his heart. Despite the efforts of emergency services, Wayne was pronounced dead at the scene at around half 12 on July the 24th. Post-mortem examination would later find the cause of death to have been blood loss and a stab wound to the heart. The following day, July the 25th, Simon was arrested on suspicion of murder and later he was charged with murder. According to the Met, the defendant and the victim knew each other but their relationship was not friendly. The four said the defendant had previously been in a relationship with Wayne's long-term partner, a situation that Simon could not accept. So Simon was found guilty of the murder yesterday and is remanded to appear at the same court on the 5th of April for sentencing. Detective Chief Inspector Neil Rawlinson said this was a senseless murder that was committed for no other reason than insecurity. Timothy Simon's actions have left Wayne Phillips' loved ones devastated and even now, almost a year on, they continue to struggle to come to terms with their loss and our thoughts remain with them today. He said the entire encounter was captured on CCTV and although Simon maintained at trial that the folding knife was not his, he could be seen initially making a stabbing movement with his right hand before extending the blade and using it to stab Mr Phillips. So guys, I just want to say rest in peace Mr Phillips and my condolences go out to your family. There's a few stories coming out from the streets of the UK, it's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.